Hiroshi Sato being part of the equal list was both a surprise but also not much of a surprise at the same time. There's always been a question that I had about it and in particular it was what led to him joining the Equalists? And well, I think I may have the answer. Now, Hiroshi Sato, to me, kind of comes across as someone who would have very, very quiet and well-maintained silence on his prejudices towards other people, in this case, benders. Now, the reason why I say that is because for the amount of prejudice that he has, I don't think it's possible that it's just the loss of his wife that led to such intense hatred of benders. If anything, I think there was a small prejudice that was there from the beginning. And one that could possibly be passed down from the people who originally lived in Cranefish Town, as it was before it became Republic City. And if you don't know what I mean about Cranefish Town, I highly recommend checking out the Imbalance graphic novels to do with Avatar The Last Airbender. And maybe check out Legend of Portacast's discussion of the graphic novels too, because I'm in that discussion, so check them out on Spotify. But from that alone, that passed down prejudice of this frustration and anger between benders and non-benders that went back quite far into the beginnings of Republic City's creation, it's possible that it passed down through family generations also, which is where Hiroshi Sato could come in. If anything, it's possible as well, with him being someone who came from very humble backgrounds and found it difficult to even find work or put across the dream that he had of being able to create things. Seeing benders who are able to pretty much do that themselves and find work in various different avenues, having the frustration of having to do it all himself without any help is going to build up some prejudice towards people who have that extra edge above you. And so prejudice will be born out of that. Add into the fact that when he does become successful, he then loses his wife to a firebender who breaks into their home and kills her. From there, the anger that will come from that of losing his wife to someone who is has all the opportunities in his mind as well, and yet took someone's life because they could, and with their bending as well, or at least that is the assumption there. Once she is lost, his fear and frustration and anger towards them grows, especially towards his daughter Asami, who he then puts into self-defence classes to help prepare her so he can never face the possibility of losing his daughter once more to a bender. And in the fact that also, from what we can see of his factories, he doesn't hire any benders, so if anything he's also limiting her contact with people who can bend, possibly out of fear but also due to a subtle prejudice that probably was there from the start when maybe he wasn't ever hiring benders for his factories, which is where his growth of the subtle prejudice would come in. Maybe he was doing some dodgy dealings here and there to kind of make sure that benders would not get the opportunities that he believed they didn't deserve because they didn't work for it, such as the fact that his factories were pretty non-bender specific in their workforce. But in general, keeping that pretty low profile so he kind of can't get done for any of it, or even be called out as bender prejudice, if that is even such a term. But those small prejudice and those small things that he would use to his advantage to kind of keep benders below him in his own mind would have continued and maybe even grown a little bit more, even though it was very quiet, seeing as especially Tenzin and Lin didn't think he was anti-bender, even with the loss of his wife. They knew everything that had gone on there. But it took them slightly by surprise that he could possibly be an equalist, which gives me the idea that he was very quiet about his prejudices. But it's possible he even started small underground organisations to help find a way to take down the bending elite. And maybe that's how he met Amon. Maybe they started small and grew from there, with him just being one of the quiet, silent partners in the background, funding and helping financially support as a whole the Equalist movement. And all of this just because of a small prejudice that could have gone back further to the beginning of Republic City, to then the loss of his wife and fear that Benders would do the same to his daughter. Fear and prejudice goes a long way. 
and it's possible the same thing was happening here with Hiroshi Sato. And that's why he joined the Equalists, because he saw no other way to help save the world from benders who had already tried to ruin it with their own existence. That sounded slightly more serious than I was expecting it to, but it was just a really fascinating thing to think how someone can get to that level of hatred and prejudice towards people who, in their minds, may be at an advantage in comparison to them because of the abilities that they have. So thinking about this was just really fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up, comment your own thoughts down below, and share it as well if you enjoyed. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. In the description box you'll find the links to all of my social media, my merchandise store, and my Patreon, where if you can support me, then is a place to do so. But if you can't support me financially, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and that'll do nicely. I absolutely love talking about Legend of Korra, so I want to keep doing this, and I hope you guys continue to enjoy it. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.